everyone. Thanks for checking into the pit stop. This is our recap for Amazing Race season 36, episode five, Save the Stress for Later. I'm James. And I'm Kayla. And I see we're both repping pink for our girls. <laughs> I felt like it was only fitting for our, our latest fallen team. I'm so sad to see them go. And I'm excited to add them into the stream a little bit yeah. later. But before that, we have some very special guests to add to our stream. And it's one of their first times on the Pit Stop Recap. But let's not keep them waiting any further. Let's go ahead and welcome the queens from season 31 of The Amazing Race, sisters Rachel and Alyssa Riley. Hey, y'all. Hi. Literal queens. You <laughs> so we're good. We're good. We're just, you know, getting ready for uh, this amazing race. I'm very excited about it. I've, watched, I've been watching this season and it's really fun. Not that I hated it, but I just like, you know, we've talked about this before. It's just not the same experience. Oh, no. 100% it's not. Yeah. So I'm, I was like super glad to get like a little bit of old school back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's always the OG that's the best. So and I think the casting this season, like the dynamic just duos that we have, like, they're really carrying the season. Because I got to admit, I feel like a lot of these tasks are a bit lackluster. I, I do agree. agree. The teams are super dynamic and that there's definitely standouts this season. The football player and his wife, the yep. mom and her son. Um, the it's two, Ricky, are they brothers? Ricky and Caesar, obviously. Everyone thinks that they're just running the show and I'm in <laughs> automatically. Everyone's a little salty about them at this point because they're thinking that it's the Ricky and Caesar show. But it's, it's, so it true. is their show. Okay, so have they won more more race legs than anyone yet? They So they got second place the first two legs, I okay. believe, and then they've they gotten first every time yeah. since. So I think they're on their way to potentially break you know, Baby David Rachel, Rachel yeah. their their streak, as well as Justin and Diana's. So they might be breaking records, but you know what? I, I don't mean to criticize or like put a little bit of like an asterisk next to this, but like, it's not a traditional season of the race. Getting first on this type of format constantly, I don't know. I just, I view it very differently from like what Dave and Rachel and Justin and Diana were able to accomplish. Okay. I will say Dave and Rachel's season was hard. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, you were, you lived it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had like a, a third person. Stop. Yeah, we had a pit stop one time that was six hours. Like, yeah. That's a quick turnaround. That was horrible. Yeah. The amazing race is brutal in general. We had pit stops that were six hours and overnight and right. No, we never had a six hour pit stop. Every pit stop we ever had on 31 was probably like, 12 no i don't even think 12 like 14 hours minimum oh they, okay it's been longer like i think your season even james they were all pretty long right yeah for the most part i think the last was like the penultimate leg and it was like a quick eight hour turnaround but kayla you when you came back to race <laughs> after the stop like i'm assuming the like the, the the legs were longer in terms of like the pit stops because of COVID testing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, listen, we had like 48 <laughs> hours sometimes. <laughs> oh my God, 48 hours? Yeah, I mean, to her, like in the beginning, like, I mean, Raquel and I have touched on this so many times. We were super bummed by this. Um, oh, oh yeah, between like one and two, but, two hour pit stop. but that was before COVID. Okay. So like pre COVID, our first two legs were like normal. And like, I mean, that really got to us like sleep deprivation wise, but like going back, that was like the big thing that Raquel and I were bummed about because we're just used to that from like a flight attendant lifestyle. But yeah. like everyone was kind of put on the same playing field of like getting actually like good sleep. I mean, cause I'm not going to lie. Like we got some good sleep. Like, we were, like, <laughs> <laughs> like three meals a day like that day <laughs> like I mean other than like just being honestly like confined to such a small space and like we couldn't like leave our room that like got yeah. a little irritating but no I like I I have to say like we had it pretty good as far as like long pit stops <laughs> mm, that's really nice yeah, and Rachel and I couldn't flight. even eat when we got to our pit stops we would oh, just yeah. sleep You're so immediately tired. Just wanna oh sleep I bet wanna, like I don't even some there was some I didn't wash my clothes because I was just like I don't even care. 
Like, yeah. Mm. No. yeah. And Rachel got and a brutal rash which, on her too. That yeah, and the Holderness family is going on tour right now, right? So yes, oh, for their that's book. So exciting. Yeah, <laughs> that is exciting. For their ADHD so book. Yes. Also, hey Lewis from Lewis hey, and Michelle. Lewis. No disrespect to COVID seasons. I want to make that record straight. I just, <laughs> I just recognize that there are huge differences between that experience versus like a traditional season of the race. And that's not yeah. anyone's fault. I'm just saying that there are definitely some differences in terms of how things are structured. And yeah. that has to be taken into consideration, I feel like, sometimes. I can't um, even imagine. Let's go ahead and talk about this latest episode. At the beginning, um, teams were flown to Santiago, Chile and had to depart from Plaza de Armas in groups of 15 minutes apart based on the order of their arrival at the previous pit stops. In group one, we had Ricky and Cesar, Amber and Vinny. In group two, we had Danny and Angie, Rod and Leticia, and Juan and Shane. And then in group three, Derek and Shalisa, Yvonne and Melissa, Sunny and Busy, and Kishori and Karishma. Once they left the pit start, they had to make their way to a garage before receiving their next clue to find Marilyn Monroe's Thunderbird, which I loved this. I thought this was very cool and interesting. I didn't even realize it was disappearing and then it just popped up six years ago. So yeah. this is a fun little fact. But okay, before we talk about the tasks, what was so hard for group three and finding these marked cars? Yeah, I need to, I need some insight because I mean, it like you saw them. They were like drenched in sweat by the time they finally got to the car. I'm like, are y'all good? Like the leg hasn't even started yet. <laughs> I will tell you sometimes the like it's right in front of your face and you don't see it. I don't know why, but like, and then sometimes you get so That's lucky stress. where you shouldn't have even seen something. And then you just like it, like from the corner of your eye and you just catch it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's the thing. So it's I also think- like race brain. I mean, yeah. when they, when they read the clue out loud, it said the marked cars so i would be looking for the cars being marked but the way the edit was shown it kept zooming in on the flag on a light pole and depending on how you ran down the street it wasn't facing the sidewalk it was facing toward the street so if you aren't running directly at the light pole i think it would have been a very easy thing to overlook but i heard it took them like an hour to find their cars or something outrageous like that oh (laughs) no I mean, th- these challenges are brutal. And so I believe it. I believe that it, it was, you know, like Janelle, how she couldn't find the Rolex for an entire episode. <laughs> that is true. I mean, they, we had to wait for her for like for eight Rolex. hours. Yeah. And it said Rolex literally everywhere all over the market. <laughs> I love it. Well, we love a good self-driving leg as well. It always brings a lot of drama to the show, especially when you start to realize which teams can or can't necessarily drive stick shift. But I will ask Kishore and Kirshma this when they hop on a little later. The way the edit looked like, it didn't look like they were stalling out leaving the pit start. It looked almost like they were at the garage already and it kept splicing from like two different geographical locations. It It just didn't really add up to me. So I want to know, like, was it really that dramatic or was it just for an amazing race classic moment of I can't drive a stick shift? (laughs) But also if they're stalling at the part of getting to the garage, I would imagine they also stalled in the beginning. Maybe that was just like the best shot they could get of them stalling. Because you always have to drive kind of away and like like get the cameraman get that shot before they hop in the car with you. So that very well could have could have been the case. A basic um, race 101 is learn how to drive a stick shift before you go on the car. I rented a stick shift for an entire month before I went on the Amazing Race, but we didn't even get any stick shifts, I don't think. Did we, Rage? I I know. I was just I was just thinking about that in my head. I, I was so like, mad. I don't but... think we did because we had like a, that motorcycle a party, party trick I have now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, though, driving stick is sometimes easier said than done. Will and I practiced before we left, and we still caused a little backup at the Paris airport on our season. So, well, again, I mean, like if you're teaching yourself stick shift the month before, because Raquel did the same thing, she ran in a car, but like more times than not, depending on where you are, you're on the other side of the road, you're like having to think about other things that you wouldn't have to think about in the US. So, like, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. I would be mad if I was you. <laughs> like I practiced stick shift and then I didn't even get to use it on the race. I'd be like, what the hell? I prepped for this. <laughs> or, you practice, or you practice on like one type of shift 
a stick shift car. And then when you get on the race, it's just a completely different feel. Cause that's really what yeah. it all is. That was our issue. <laughs> Lewis <laughs> said my foot was shaking. Practice so on a Ford, some type of Ford. For the first task on this episode, it was the roadblock. Who's feeling bored? And this roadblock, one team member had to build a skateboard so that it matched the example in order to receive their next clue. Now, Rachel and Alyssa, if you were running this season and you opened this clue and it said, who's feeling bored out of the two of you who do you think would have ended up doing this roadblock and how would have you performed i would have done it for sure because i hate being bored and that's my motto and let's <laughs> think of some some way to entertain ourselves and i have the balance of the two of us yeah that's smart you don't have, you don't have you had to like put it together so i wonder if like do you think you're good at putting things together like a puzzle uh, no, you're better at puzzles. <laughs> okay, listen. Um, the yes. problem is, she, we would have picked her because just like what she just said, That's she would true. be like, I had no balance and I'm good at skateboards and then we would yeah. have gone out there and it would have been like building a skateboard well that's what, exactly what happened with the cousin yeah. right yeah, yeah. Oh, it literally okay. had that same conversation yeah. where Kishore is like I don't know anything about skateboards and Christian was like I ride them like I've been on a skateboard and they're like you do it and then Christmas, it's a puzzle. I I'd be build. like I dated someone who skateboarded once so like I yeah. guess I'll do it you know like I'd be like what am I supposed to do here Kayla do you think you or Raquel would have done this roadblock um I believe I would have done it I I think I would definitely be better at the building hopefully we could like assume that but even if it even if we were like thinking like oh maybe we have to ride it yeah I, I just think overall it would have been me but like also can we please talk about the irony of like who's bored because like honestly I was bored watching <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You're not okay." We budget. just went and like saw a car, and now they're just gonna build a skateboard. Like, and but, but I feel like they do these thirty-five. I know, but they do these challenges a lot. Like one season, we had to build a harp. People have had to build like I don't know boats. I mean, all these things we had to. Build. Alyssa and I built some like weird. <laughs> Uh, Wind water yeah. power yeah like you have these challenges that are boring and the point right. i think is to see how the teams react when you're yeah. doing these like boring challenges right because it's like they're hard they're complicated they are yeah, complicated it just sucks that it's sometimes it's it doesn't come across that way like mm -hmm. as a viewer like we yeah. all know because we've done it how difficult and like detailed it is um, but going back to the casting, like this is where it, the only reason why it was entertaining for me was to see how the teams interacted yeah. um, and just like things that happened like within there. But yeah, I was like, oh, building a skateboard, boo. Like I want to see them like try and skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, once they, once they put it together, maybe they had to like get from point A to point B on the skateboard. Yeah. So something to just to add an extra layer. But I think with these challenges, it seems very straightforward, very simple. But there's that one detail, which Danny was Danny, really up Danny. so quickly. He's like, they wouldn't, it's the amazing race. They wouldn't make these tire, the wheels, different colors if they it didn't mean down. anything. So he was able to pick up. And I think that was the one detail that really kind of sets the teams apart as who's really paying attention to those details. So I think that's where the teams get tripped up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Juan didn't pay attention to the colors and kept getting rejected. So yeah, I feel like that was the necessary, the necessary little trick that got them. So, which I probably wouldn't have picked up on, but I feel like Rachel, after being a seasoned vet, she should have always picked up on those things. I did always so. pick up on those kind of things. <laughs> I've, I've always tried to tell, I tried to tell Alyssa all the things. No, I feel like um, like everyone slept on our flights and we were the only idiots wide awake. Like, and everyone had like Benadryl or Ambien. We were, <laughs> we were like the only team that was like wired the entire flights. And I'm like, Rachel, three seasons and you wouldn't say like, we should probably bring melatonin or sleep, <laughs> sleep on the flights. So. Tiny Bubbles in the chat says, to be fair, we did get Rod losing his nut. That's, That's right. right. And we got a whole conversation about it. It was <laughs> yeah. so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Danny and his mom were the star of this episode. They were the star 100%. of that. 100%. Yeah. In that like so that many little ways. interview it was 
gold. Like yeah, that I'm dynamic. a middle school teacher. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was PG, PG, or G. Speaking of Danny, I mean, during this D, uh, during this roadblock, he shared that information with Vinny. When Vinny literally walked up, Vinny had even started during the challenge. Danny pointed out, like, "Hey, it's the wheels. Make sure the colors are in the right order." This is a hot topic of debate that I feel like has been a hot topic of debate since my season, where it's like a team is essentially giving help at a roadblock or giving some sort of answer at a roadblock. No, what I do you all? How do y'all feel about this little interaction between Danny and Vinny? I. I like, okay, so yes, we all want to be kumbaya on the race. And like, I love when the teams do it and help me out. But I think <laughs> if I went back, I wouldn't help anyone unless they were like legit, my like uh, ally, like my friend that I knew was going to help me that I wanted to see. Because at the end of the day, it's still a race. We're all competing and someone's getting eliminated at the end of the leg. So mm -hmm. I, I'm tired of the kumbaya every seat we've seen kumbaya seasons since your season james i mean well, i feel like you started it with the alliance <laughs> from our season no and then james kumbaya capitalized kumbaya. on the alliance <laughs> <laughs> but i think the biggest difference is like knowing when to help when is it going to actually serve you long term so i do i do understand danny's thought process of like, you know, last leg, you know, Amber and Vinny really helped us at that roadblock. So he wanted to return the favor. Right. It's not like he announced it to everybody. It was just one team. But I'm wondering, because we're seeing this dynamic with Danny and Angie, where Danny's a little too eager beaver with that team play. And Angie's like, hey, like, I recognize I'm a little bit more on the physically weaker side. So whenever you talk to another team with like navigation or giving them that upper hand in a roadblock with some kind of answer, you're you're diminishing any kind of lead we might have if it does become more physical. So it's right. it's knowing when to help and when to cut your losses. Yeah. Which Danny's mom talk to him and like yeah. I, I feel like he maybe sees it now after this leg because as much as I'm going to eat my words from what I said last episode because remember I was like all kind of like uh like it's Danny's mom's race too like I want to see yeah. okay I literally ate my words this episode because she like I could tell she was really in it this leg and she even said yep. she's like this is the first leg that I've actually had fun on and she's like kind of getting on to him of like listen like I get you're being nice and that's like to the nature of who you are, but like, I can't beat them. So you helping them hurts me, which in turn hurts us. And so I think his mom having said that, like kind of hopefully will adjust how he moves the rest of the time, because again, there's a time to help. Right. And I get that he helped because Amber and Vinny helped them, right. but like, Vinny didn't even ask, he wasn't in a place where like he needed help yet. Like what if, what if Vinny would have figured that out on his own, you yes. know? So like, that was one thing that I will say I appreciated from like my season is like, we all were very great friends. So it's hard, right? To like race with people you care about and you become friends with these people. But like, unless someone asked, like I remember like me, Kim and Penn and Raquel, we were at like the donkey station together. Raquel and I were really having a hard time. Kim and Penn did not help us until we asked. And same thing with like, you know, later in the season, like Penn had asked us or we decided to work together for the call. It's like, unless you're asked, like, why? Like, why help? Yep. You know, I don't know. That's the difference. If, I could get on my phone no asked about it because I don't like it. I don't like it personally. Yeah, just don't say anything unless someone asks you're not obligated to like share. So right. that, that's the difference. Like, yeah, keep it close. <laughs> you think that they'll do another all-star season ever? I would love to see it. Cause I feel like there's been a lot of great teams since your all-star season, Rachel, with you and Brendan. And then also there hasn't been like an, I, I would consider reality clash an all-star because it's all these really all-star right. personalities. No, it wasn't though. But yeah, so I feel like it's been a minute since we've actually had like the traditional all-star season. So I would personally, as a fan, love to see it just because there's like, been so many great. Right? Yeah. A, such a big especially one. Especially for a big one. Maybe we'll do the winners at war for season 40. Maybe. I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> I would love to. Or the dynamic duos. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think um, like I was th the reason I brought that point up was because I wonder if we see another All Star season if we'll see different, more aggressive gameplay. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it would be a little more cutthroat. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It could really go either way. I could kind of see. I don't know. We'll we'll see if this comes to you know bite Danny in the butt because I feel like we're seeing these little moments because maybe long term maybe that's their downfall, but on the other side I I don't feel like we're seeing enough of it or it's not being talked in interviews but like Ron and Letitia and Ron, uh, Juan and Shane they also seem to have something going on this is now the second episode or maybe third episode in a row where I feel like we've seen these two teams sort of link up at a task you know Rod can't find his nut. And so Juan's <laughs> like, let me help. And so I I saw, I was paying close attention when I was rewatching today. There's so many times where Juan was actively searching for Rod's nut. And I was like, this is not being highlighted enough, but this is another instance where two teams are absolutely working together. It's just not being shown as drastically in the edit as we are seeing right. with like Amber and Vinny and um, Angie and Danny. We'll see if these relationships continue to develop. Let's talk about the detour for this leg of the race. It was a choice between perform for pesos or climb for clues. And perform for pesos, one team member had to perform and do a little bit of a street performance while their partner played the maracas and then collect 2,500 pesos from a passerby in order to receive their next clue. In Climb for Clues, both team members had to climb a six-story former cement factory to retrieve a ribbon and exchange them for their next clue. If we're running this race, which side of the detour are we choosing? Rachel and Alyssa, what do you think you guys would pick? Uh, I would definitely pick Climb, even though I have no upper body strength. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> I always learn that if you have to rely on someone giving you money, then you are like relying on someone else. But like with this, you have control of your own destiny. Also, like, <laughs> I feel like I'd be so bad at that. <laughs> playing that <laughs> instrument that I would be like, <laughs> people would like pay me maybe just to stop. <laughs> Literally. I was going to say, who, which one out of you two has the big drum and the thing attached to your shoe and who just has the maraca? <laughs> I would love to see Rachel do that. I would yeah, have the drum have so and I would be it. walking around. It's like attached to your shoe. Yeah. I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even know in my head how that works. Like I was trying to figure out how that even works. And I was like, how did they even, who like even comes up with this? <laughs> I feel like yeah. you two would have crushed that though, because you guys have such great personalities and you yeah. would know to put on a show. I think you guys would have busted that out. I would have loved to see Rachel do it. Like I would have been <laughs> dying laughing. We had so much fun on our tours because Rachel was so goofy and like our camera crews all like some of them begged to work with us. They were like, you get to work with them again because we would just like run people over in the car and like, <laughs> oh my God. But we um, you guys, goofy. listen, I took the race very seriously. I did rock climbing prep also. So I would have been really good on that. Remember, Rachel, didn't you tell me to do that? Oh, I did. And then I told us to both like do yoga, like everything. I was just like, we need to like know how to shoot a bow and arrow. We need to go like take never archery know. classes, like yeah. everything. And like, you never know. And I just remember like when we went on that, the race, I <laughs> like, you just forget everything. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I think I did like two months of Spanish prep, like, but everything goes out the window, except I do, I do. Every time I go, I memorize all this. Well, I don't memorize because that would be really hard. But all the subways or the train stations with the major cities, mm -hmm. I will go through and like look at them and try to like figure out, okay, this is how to get around if we're in this like major city. Because um, like chances are you'll be in some major city. Right. Um, Ricky and... Cesar said, also, we looked at the money exchange rate at the airport when we arrived at every country. So we knew that it was going to be less than three U.S. dollars during that. Oh, oh, smart. Oh, they're so smart. smart. Um, also, is that the real Ricky? Ricky yeah. Alexander? Yeah. They're, they're, they're in the chat. And it looks Hello. like uh, hey guys. Danny from Danny and Angie for Team Walla Walla are in the yeah, chat hi. as well. Hey, y'all. Thanks, thanks for watching. I love how everyone is on here. Um, Kayla, what side of the detour do you think you and Raquel would have chosen? 
Um, we would have done the rock climbing for sure. Like we, we early on, we did not want to perform. We did not want to do any, any kind of song and dance of any kind. (laughs) (laughs) Like that was a hard no for us. But also like Rachel said, like I have no upper body strength. So like it would have been a hesitant, but I've been like, I mean, I'd rather rock climb than, but like you said, I didn't, we didn't look up how much like conversion rate that was. So that's like dark. that sounded like a lot of money, but no, now it's only $3. Like $3. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it would be that. Right. Yeah. So, but no, we would have rock climbed for sure. And it yeah. looked like if you slipped, they like held you where yeah. you were. Yeah. It wasn't like you went all the way back down to the bottom. That's so, like, I, I thought I noticed that when, uh, the, especially with the cousins slipped a few times. Right. So I noticed that a few times with like, the teams would slip and they would just be at the same spot and then they had yeah. to just keep going. So, so it's like, as long as you weren't afraid of heights or like you trusted the person with the rope below you, it's like, if you fall, whatever, just like right. try and go with, keep going. you know, keep going. And those rocks were big. So yeah. you could, yeah. as long as you could like get your foot up, you didn't have to just do upper body. You could also like push yourself up. I mean, yeah, it wasn't like built to be impossible for anyone to do. Right. Right. My mentality going on the race was even if you are afraid of heights, like on the race, you're not afraid of anything. You're, you just do it. And it's the best place to do anything you're afraid of. So like, and we saw that with Sean. I mean, he overcame Mm -hmm. his fears. Yes, he did. I would just close my eyes and do stuff. Literally. (laughs) (laughs) I think Will Will and I definitely would have done the performing. I don't think we would have had uh, any issues with that. Mm-hmm. And especially, would have been with Will, fun. especially Will being 6'6", he would have stuck out like a sore thumb. That is true. Everyone, everyone would have been drawn to him specifically. <laughs> For I sure. Think that, would have, that would have been our task. But, but Will... <laughs> Because he's so tall, don't you think it would just be easy for him to just like boop up the top of the rock? That's true. That's true. But yeah, also, I think if we were at the front of the pack, I think, yeah, you wouldn't have to wait. But it looked like there's only three tracks to like climb. It did look like that. You're right. If you would have gotten there behind other teams, you would have had to wait. Yeah. But maybe uh, Kishore and Karishma can tell us about the rock climbing about if there was a little bit of a wait. But yeah, I would have been like Letitia, how she was like, you know, she's like, uh, like Dejanair, what does she say? Money? Or she's like so oh, passive, she- and he's like, babe, like <laughs> I need you to be a little more assertive. I'd be like, you do it then, like you know, very like, different approach. Or like Ricky and Seth are having the time of their lives. Like, Ricky, I know, like I've this is, I'm not again. about begging for money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, they could yeah. also engage with the people because they speak Spanish, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was also like they were comfortable. I think, yeah, where- they had fun. I think that they had fun this leg. Mm-hmm. It looked like to me that they were just like living their best life this leg. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the teams and then we're going to add Kishore and Karishma in. So excited to hear about their experience. But since we're talking about Ricky and Cesar, this is what their third first place finish in a row. They're absolutely dominating the race. They're doing it with such ease. They're making it look so freaking easy. Um, but they clearly are just having so much fun, which I think is a huge component of the race that some teams I think lose over time, but they just seem to be finding more momentum with the fun and the enthusiasm along the way. I think they're shoe ins to be top three at this point. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Because you even Everyone got like a does. teeny tiny glimpse of them, like not bickering. I wouldn't say they bickered, but like you could sense some stress in like the direction part of them being in the car, which like I appreciated just because like it was like a little glimpse of it not looking effortless and they right. still like smoked it. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, they're for sure like top three pick, like for sure. Their banter in the car was hilarious. When I loved it. I'm a little stressed and Cesar was like, we'll save that stress for later. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. And I then loved at the it. roadblock, it was so cute too. And everyone's cheering their partner on and Cesar's oh, doing yeah. the skateboard and he's like, Ricky, can I get a come on babe or something? And so, <laughs> They're just, they're just a lot of fun to watch, but God, do they make the race look easy. And I'm just like, I want to see them just kind of have a little bit of a stumble, a little bit of a mix up just to see how they handle it, but they're crushing it. They're absolutely dominating. Right. Um, Juan and Shane, you know, they, they know that they're not a middle of the pack team and they proved that this leg getting second place, which I believe is their highest placement so far. Um, we're seeing this budding relationship between them and Rod and Letitia. I I think these two, now that they're at the top of the pack and they're going to be in that first departure group 
moving forward, I think that they will do a good job at maintaining that spot. I agree. And this is kind of where the debate of the 15 minute thing comes into play. Like, it's like, if you can get into that first released group, yeah, you're, you should be in a good spot. Um, but yeah. Well, that was my question. Cause you said 15 minutes, but the last, one of the teams said that they were at the, the team that got seventh, they said um, they were at the back. They started 30 minutes bef- after. But, right. So how, so, why were they 30 minutes? Bef- because after? they were the third group. So like oh, the first group's released, then there's a second group 15 minutes after, and then there's another group 15 They're minutes 15 after minutes that. After. Okay. That yeah. Cause I was really confused. Cause I was like, I thought it was 15. I thought it was, everyone was 15. I guess I didn't realize it was 15 minutes after the 15 minutes. Yeah. That's hard. Catching yeah. down up is really hard. Yeah. Which is why I think now them being at the top, they're probably going to stay yeah. at the top. Mm-hmm. They're a strong team. And I'll be curious to see how their relationship with Rod and Letitia continues to evolve. Because there's clearly something going on there. Right. Especially and- like the, the closer to the end that they make it. Because it's like, again, like you want to position yourself with people that one, I think you can beat in challenges, which like, Sunny and Biz are a good one. Like they come in, they dominate the challenge. They're just having major problems in between getting to and from. But like, not only that, like who you can be in a foot race. And it's like, I'm sorry, but Rob and Letitia are not the ones I would want to be in a foot race with. (laughs) You know, but then again, the boys, they might feel confident. I don't know. But in third place, Amber and Vinny, and we saw last week, they were just not on the same page. They were not working well together as a team, which they addressed. And we talked about this in our recap last week, Kayla. How are they going to bounce back from this? Are they going to have that conversation at the pit stop and be like, let's get on the same page, which they talk about at the start of the episode. They mm-hmm. acknowledge that they weren't operating as the same team. They discuss things that they can improve on. Amber's like, I'm going to try and not be so reactive to the things that Vinny says. And then for Vinny, he's going to work on making sure that he goes at Amber's pace, let her set the pace for their team because they can only go together. And if he allows her to set that pace, then they'll be able to perform well. So there was still a little bit of friction with them in the South self-driving and not really knowing where to go and backseat driver here and there (laughs) bickering. But I think that if they continue this mindset, it will serve them well. I agree. Yeah, it's really important to be on the same page in the race because yeah, I'm tired. I'm the one that just cr- starts crying for no reason. Yes. <laughs> Even though you didn't cry on our season, really, other um, than when we got there's lost literally in Dubai. a gift where you're like, Rachel, stop <laughs> yeah. in Dubai because we were in first place, and then our taxi driver literally got us in last place, and yeah, I was, was so pissed. Yeah, that was awful. <laughs> but I was like, what are we going to do? There's no, like, you're stuck. You can't yeah. do anything. But fighting is definitely, I feel like, entertaining. They love it. For oh, the they show. love it. And they, <laughs> they love it. showcase it. Yes. Yeah. Rachel and I surprisingly, like, decided we were not going to fight on the race. But, <laughs> um... <laughs> <gasps> we didn't really fight. We just, like, you know, cried. I cried. I just cried. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe fought with the other teams. I don't know. I don't a remember. Good, a good sister <laughs> fight every now and then is fun. Yeah, exactly. And some good liners like your brand is watching. You know, I don't remember. Oh, this your brand is watching. one liners. Yeah. Well, that it, was a legitimate statement from the brand saying that she couldn't work on oh, a specific yeah. network because it was against her brand. So as Rachel was like, well, just remember that. <laughs> I love the quote, the amazing race is supposed to be good and fun. Thank you. One of the most iconic quotes from the race. (laughs) Rachel has all the iconic quotes. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like wearing a beret, crying, a beret with sequins, nonetheless, bawling, (laughs) like in Italy, the amazing race is supposed to be good and fun. (laughs) You're like, this is not fun. (laughs) Yeah. So good. Um, In fourth place, Angie and Danny. Love these two. I constantly sing their praises. I hope that they can continue to stay at the top of the pack. I do and I'm also worried at the imbalance roadblock because I only think Angie's done one. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I think they're going to have to start leveling out the roadblocks Yeah, moving forward. I feel like this would have been a good one for Angie to do. The skateboard. Yeah. Like that, Actually, you know what I yeah. mean? 
Yeah, I wish she would have done that one. I'm like scared. And then That's I mean, you saw the out. preview, right? Oh it yeah, looks the preview like she gets into some week. like yeah, I don't know. For sure. But I, if I were the other teams, that's who I would be trying to keep around. Like, give them all the help you can get because I feel like, especially for that, knowing that she's gonna have to complete the roadblocks, and if they can keep her around till the finals, and she can't complete com uh, complete the roadblocks, then that's just an easy team to get out of there that's a lot of forward thinking yeah did you, what, did you and will split it up one and one we tried yeah we, yeah we missed one leg where he did back to back but yeah we always tried to alternate as best we could yeah what about you kayla did you do alternate in the beginning um it was definitely raquel heavy just yeah. because ours was so much self-drive in the beginning and like I, mentally i was just spent like i I did not handle the self drive well. And so every time we came up to a task, I'm like, Raquel, like you have to do it. And then, but when we came back from COVID, then I feel like we went one for one. Um, yeah. Cause we were really good about picking up like what we thought it was. And like Raquel was going to do physical. I was going to do detail. And like, it played out that way. One for one for the most part. Same with us. I took all the physical and Rachel was doing all the puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. the way to do it. It you is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except for the elephants, Alyssa, because I, you were like, I want to do elephants. That's all I want to do. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was a cool one. Well, yeah. I hope, I hope Danny, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can tone back the team play just a little bit. Yeah. Just know when to help versus not help. I also mm -hmm. think Angie knowing how to drive stick shift so well is going to be an advantage as well long term and Danny with their navigation they make a great team on these self drive legs they do mm -hmm. like they they did the self drive effortless like mm -hmm. you know which again all those other teams followed them yep mm -hmm. so it's like had they not like i felt like the leg could have been a little bit more scrambled cuz like you yeah. and i talked about James like it was like pretty predictable Kind yeah, of. It was very very linear. I think once um, all the first two groups left the roadblock, I was like, it's pretty much a nail in the coffin for one of the bottom four teams at this right. point. None of them are at the roadblock yet, and everyone's already left. So yeah, yeah it mm -hmm. felt a little too linear. But I want to show this. This is posted in a Facebook group, and I sent it to Danny earlier today. But it says, Will and James having an alliance? <laughs> nah. Andy and Danny having an alliance. That's okay. So true. <laughs> That is so true. I kid you not. It's not somebody okay before, when we do it. Somebody, when I said I was doing this with you, they're like, oh, the Alliance one. I was like, <laughs> literally. I'm like, I didn't even know James was a notorious. I mean, I knew you were notorious for making an Alliance, but, and for that being a dominant factor of your season, but I didn't know it was such a thing. Haters. Oh, it's a, it's Haters. a thing. <laughs> In fifth place was Rod and Leticia. And I feel like the last two legs, there's been a little bit more friction between these two. So I'll be curious if they're going to get to a boiling point or not. But they do seem to be really good in high stress situations. Um, but navigation is clearly not a strong suit. They, I feel, feel like they went like an hour outside of the city before they were like, we need to turn around. <laughs> See, I'm getting the vibe that like she's kind of like, Eh, like, you know, if we don't do well, like we go home, like, you know, cause like Rob, like when they were kind of lost, he was very like, like, help me out, you know, like right. you're the one with the map, whatever. And she was kind of like, it doesn't look good. <laughs> like, you know, she's just like already kind of like, eh, like, I don't know. So like, That's I'm that. like foreseeing, like maybe like, I, I not, I don't think she would never give up. I don't get that vibe, but I just, mm -hmm. something about it, like, it, like her urgency is like almost gone. Like, yeah. And like, or maybe that's just how she handles stress. It's like, you know, I'm not going to get like my panties in a wad or whatever, but she just seemed very just like, uh, I don't know. We're lost. Doesn't look good. Like, and like, that was kind of it. We also got a little bit more insight to their dynamic. Cause she was saying that she like, doesn't just let Rod take Call the, the shot. Lead. She's like, she's yeah. not one to just go with the flow. So I wonder if that's foreshadowing, maybe kind of a boiling point between these two, but they're a strong yeah. team. And yeah. I will be curious too if Rod, I mean, he did give a pointer to Juan in the roadblock. And Juan even says, like, this just saved me 20 minutes because Juan, I don't think, would have been able to figure it out. So I'm wondering if that will bite him in the butt if he continues right. to help Juan and Shane at these tasks. 
Well, we want the drama, so I hope your foreshadowing yes. is correct. <laughs> Give us some drama. It needs it. <laughs> um, I, the sixth place team was Yvonne and Melissa. And we're slowly starting to see more of them in the edit, but not enough to be like a standout team for me quite yet. But I would love to see more of them because they seem fully capable. It's yeah. not like they're really struggling at anything. They just being in that sweet spot of the middle, you don't get much edit. You don't get right. much time. So I did appreciate <laughs> I did appreciate like their their emotion at the mat though. Like I can just tell like they really want to be there, you yes. know, which like as like a fan, like I love to see that. You know, I don't want to see someone that's like, "Oh, it's okay." Like I mean, they were very emotional, I felt like they were really proud that they were still in it and stuff. And so that was kind of sweet and cool to see. Like I don't know. I just I like when teams are like emotionally invested in like staying. Mm -hmm. Yep. I feel like they should have a spinoff for The Amazing Race to show the personalities of the team, like, even off the mat, like, afterward, like, conversations, more interaction, because I do think that it's not as personal, like, less of, like, the puzzles, like, we don't need to see the skateboard being put together, give us some drama, give us some of the interaction, like, we want to see the kumbaya prayers on the train, and then the fights, like, yeah. yes, yeah, well, and I felt like, I I mean, for our season, at least they gave us like little snippets of stuff that didn't make the race. And like we could post them on our Instagram and stuff like that. And I don't know that this season got that. Mm. Like yeah. me and I Raquel have their so many like, yeah. And like, I felt like it sh those showed more of Raquel and I than the season did I thought like they showed us like where we we didn't know how to reverse our car like it was like a nightmare. But anyways, it was like there were like funny moments like that that they sent us that we could post on our Instagram that I feel like you could kind of get to know a little bit more about like Raquel and I's like dynamic but yeah mm. I don't think that this season got that because I don't see them posting anything other than just like the photos from the episode yeah well they didn't even get the pre race right. interviews they didn't get anything right. they didn't get any like introduction to the teams and I don't know why that is or I don't, no. I don't know but but I agree I agree with you like I would like to know a little bit more about like the teams themselves the dynamics, yeah. yeah. Well, in seventh place was Sunny and Busy. We learned a little bit about Sunny being a Black Hawk helicopter mechanic. I feel like she keeps pulling these things out of her pocket. Like last week, it was some landscaping thing. This week, yeah. now she's a Black Hawk helicopter. She is fascinating, and Busy does call her a badass woman, and I would agree with that. So she can pilot and drive anything. But I'm really concerned with them being a little directionally challenged. Yeah. I, I'm with like them that. being at the uh, back of the pack. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, did Busy come from Phil's other show, Tough as Nails? Like, yeah, I, I feel like they cast her from that show because yeah, she a is little like crossover. Like, yeah, the black really? helicopter. It's like, wow, what else you got, girl? Yeah, like, they were. Yeah, one of them had to have been in casting for the show, and then Phil was like, actually, let's put them on the race. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, hopefully they can get their directions under control because with them being starting in the back group, I feel like constantly there's no room for error, no room for mistakes. So they got to get they got to get up in the rankings. Otherwise, I fear they'll probably go in the next week or two. Yeah, you guys, my dog thinks he's a human. He's over here. Oh, so cute. In my lap. He's and I'm like, out. it's not me snoring. It's my dog. But he like, <laughs> actually like thinks he's like a person. I love it. So cute. <laughs> what? Um, not a care in the world here. So cute. And eighth place was Derek and Shalisa and the nature of their relationship like they mentioned was to just really push each other and if it comes off as bickering it's really them encouraging each other and I feel like that's a lot of mine and Will's relationship and especially how we race so I find them to be so relatable and I just love 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 these two but I don't know I don't feel like they really kind of had any hiccups this leg so I was surprised that they checked in eighth like I, I just was like what happened did we not see it yeah, what? Okay, so they were they were released in the second group or the third group? The third group. But I'm just like, I don't feel like they really struggled. We're like, you know, Sunny well, and Busy did, sucked at the navigation, and they still were able to check in before Derek and Shalisa. Yeah. Yeah. Did they get lost? I thought they got lost finding that last 
the last like museum looking spot. Oh yeah. The pit Yeah, stop. they kind of showed that a little bit that they couldn't find where to park or like something like she's like, you got a U-turn here. So I don't know. I think it was just like, I think they found it, but I don't think they figured out how to like park there. Cause I think he was looking for marked parking or something. I don't know. Something like that. Um, it sounds like the navigation was tricky because I even asked Danny at one point, I was like, you're in first, you're in first. I'm so excited for y'all. And he goes, then we started taking one way street. So it was hard for us to turn around and correct those mistakes. Yeah. And that's why when they left the roadblock first, they dropped back in the placing. So I, I feel like navigation and directions were a theme for this leg, but I think who can help answer some of those questions are <laughs> the cousins of chaos, if you will, absolutely obsessed with these two. They brought so much entertainment to the race in the best of ways. Not like, a, oh, they're so obnoxious. They were fun to watch. They I so love watch. these two. I love their dynamic. I love their relationship. So I'm so excited to bring them out onto the recap. They've been waiting backstage long enough. So please <laughs> welcome Kashori and Karishma. Hey, ladies. Hey. 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 Hello. How are you two? Good. It's so nice to be here. Yes. I know. I mean, Krishma, I feel like you got out of work to do this. Is that true? <laughs> I'm still at work. I'm in like this room. I'm at like in this house you rented out. I'm just in the bedroom, walk myself in. I'm like, nobody bother me. <laughs> <laughs> You're having your moment. <laughs> we feel so important. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how was it reliving the episode last night for the two of you? It's always funny. I feel like we laugh when we watch it back, which is a positive thing. I feel like the only thing you can do is laugh at your your funny moments and your mistakes, but it is weird because it was almost a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. It was definitely a funny feeling because I just, that, what was really funny to me was that girl who was checking the skateboards, I still have trauma from her. So like when <laughs> I saw her, I like jumped because I had to get so many checks for the skateboard. So reliving that, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if I had a race nightmare tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we, well, we are so sad to see you go, but I love so that sad. you two had this experience together. I can't imagine how special it was for the two of you. Um, starting off this leg though, I we talked about at the beginning of the recap. First of all, I was just curious with the editing of the stalling out of the car, was it as dramatic as it seemed? Because it seemed like you were in two different spots the way this was edited. It looked like yeah. you were in the city and I then outside the garage. I think at the beginning I had like nerves, like I was, I had stick shift stage fright. Um, <laughs> so I like got on and I was ready to go. Cause we had, I had, that was the first time we, I was practicing constantly before we left for the race. And, you know, we filmed all those other legs beforehand and then all of a sudden it's stick shift. So I was so nervous. So getting in the car and also it was a different kind of car. Somebody wrote this somewhere that like Volkswagens have a different way the stick works. So I couldn't figure out first gear. Like I couldn't figure out how to get it back to first gear. So I was in second gear the entire time. And then finally, once I got it, um, then it was smooth sailing. Like I got the hang of it. So I think it was a little. I think it was dramatized like, a little bit. Yeah, but I, I still struggled point. a little bit. I won't deny that. But I, I'm laughing with you explaining that because you're like, it's a Volkswagen. That literally is what happened to Will and I. We prepared yes. on stick shift, but the moment we got into the Volkswagen, he kept starting in third gear. That, that was, was our literally thing. It felt me. different like, to him. Yeah. What's going on? What is this? Why can't I get it back? So like, I'm just keeping it in second gear the entire time. And the cameraman was deaf laughing at me. He was like, oh. <laughs> not your car. Grind that gear. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Um, how how many times did the two of you apply together? Or was this like a one and done thing? It was a, almost a one and done thing. So I actually originally applied with one of my guy best friends from college. And then I got a call from Joy and she was like, hey, we really want like a female team. You have like a mom or a sister that would want to do it with you. And I was like, well, I don't have any sisters. My mom would not do it. But I was like, I have a cousin. She's really She's fun. She's good TV though. Spontaneous. <laughs> That my mom would have been chaotic as well. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but then Karishma, it just worked out like perfectly and it just went from there. And I, I feel very grateful that it all worked out. Yeah, I agree. I just remember, I vividly remembered, I think everything was meant to be the way it like worked out. Cause I was on semester at sea when she first called me and I was traveling and I was supposed to be like out at sea in the middle of the ocean with no service. And that night we had a storm in Portugal and I had service cause the captain stayed that night. Cause Shori called me that night and she was like, get on the phone. You need to meet this casting director. Do you want to do the amazing race? So I just thank Portugal. And I thank the captain for um, having that storm and not letting us sail. Cause I don't know I don't know. I'm like, would, would it have all worked out the way it did? So 
That's so crazy. Cool. That's awesome. What is your favorite place that you visited this season? Oh my gosh, definitely Guatape, Colombia. It was so beautiful. Like just that mountain. And then I remember the boat ride to the cooking detour. I was like just so in awe. It was gorgeous. And my stepmom and dad actually live in um, Bogota, Colombia. So it was just really nice to be back somewhere um, where family is, which is really cool, very special. Oh, that's that yeah. fun. Are you, I don't know if you're allowed to say this, but where did you guys go for your sequester house? We? had to go home we like yeah they don't, do they don't do sequester anymore anymore they send you oh, home we ruined yeah. it for them <laughs> i'm so sad because it looked really cool you guys got to go to some cool places for sequester well there Wait. was a moment when they gave us our ticket to go home and i looked at kashori and i was like should we just stay here and then <laughs> just enjoy chili i wanted to do it so bad because they gave me my credit card back and i was like theoretically oh, we have to have to to james did you guys have a sequester yeah, our, um, the teams went to Prague. Oh, oh our sequester was disastrous. It was amazing. It was yeah, <laughs> the so most fun, fun ever. Where was it? We it went to, but... yeah, we were in Athens, right on the water. We had oh like a gosh. tennis court, pool. We had a casita that we had all the girls. We made our own club called Bungalow 7. And we <laughs> oh had my God. That was so fun. Every I'm so night, jealous. our handlers hated us like they were yelling at us like every night like ladies get back in here like they we were just like <laughs> oh my gosh they could not wait to get rid of us so oh, we had fun so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. before we had covid uh, there's like arun and natalia and mike and mo got to go to portugal and they always they were like it sequester was amazing because yeah they like got, they did like wine tastings they got to go on like museum tours they got this like lavish dinners and stuff and then like post covid i think they nixed the whole sequester thing like just for fear of like exposure or like yeah. maybe at this point now like now that they stopped doing it they're like eh, well i guess we don't have to do that anymore <laughs> but yeah, yeah. no so they stopped really that during our sense. season I feel like for the amazing race, it doesn't make sense to have a sequester because not that many people know who the teams are before the shows like airs and a year and a half later. It's just yeah. not necessary. But and it's not like there's like voting at the end. end for him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Voting at the end. Agreed. Yeah. Like I understand, yeah, for Survivor, Big Brother, it's like like if one of those people decides not to show up to finale or gets in an accident or something, you know, it messes up the entire show. But yeah, with the amazing race, it's not necessary. No. Yeah. Except the finale. What did you guys do for the finale? They flew us back. Yeah, they flew oh. us back. So we had to go home, which was so weird, just going back to regular life and then flying back a couple. That would, yeah, it would take me out of it almost. It did. I was in such a weird, because it's, it's so weird not being in the race anymore. And I was in college and I had to go back to college and I was just, it did not feel right. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't get... feel right to us either. <laughs> we we are so right. sad. We have to go <laughs> back to real life. It just, it, it, we should stay reality TV forever. I know. <laughs> I loved it. So, okay, going back to this leg of the race, what, are we, what do you feel like was the hardest part for the two of you? Choosing the challenges. Because it was, that was what killed us. I think instinctively, we'd get to the, like, we'd read the clue, we'd rip it open, and I'd be like, oh. I think I should do this. And then you'd have that gut feeling and it was figuring it out. And every single challenge Kashori should have done, I was doing and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I think that's what killed us uh, the most throughout the whole thing. Cause we would have saved so much time because all of my, my terrible weaknesses I was doing in these challenges and they were all Kashori's strengths. Like she's so good at navigation. She's so good at being detail oriented. Like all those things are her strengths and I had to do it. And I'm just over here. Like I can't pay attention to anything. I have the shortest attention span. And I was doing all the challenges that had that. And I was like, oh my God. You just you just never know. We were joking about it after the race. It was like every other every challenge we should have swapped. But again, you you second guess yeah. yourself yeah. and you think, oh well, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's because even in the clip I said, what if it's building the board? And then we yeah. thought, oh, maybe it's skateboarding. And Chris was like, Do you skateboard? I go, No, I don't skateboard. So then I second guessed it and I was like, oh, I guess I shouldn't do it. You know, yeah. you, you can't look back like, with regrets because at the end of the day, like, it was a great experience. Whatever happens, happens. And, like, I'm just grateful we had the opportunity and it was just a blast. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That conversation y'all had at the roadblock um, at the beginning of our recap, Rachel and Alyssa were saying they probably would have had a very similar conversation about, is it building a skateboard or like, yeah. Is it, yeah. <laughs> It was so tricky the way it was worded. It was like, and yeah. in front of escape. I'm like, okay, we're skating. I would have never, yeah. Yeah. So how long do you think you were at the roadblock after all the teens had left Krishna? I'll, I want, cause, cause Kishore gets mad at me because sometimes they edit it where it's like, I'm not there that long. I'll say it, I was there for a hot minute. I was there for a hot minute. Like I, they didn't, I, they didn't show it, but like, I also messed up how everybody was messing up the little, like the little square thing and they shifted it down. I messed yeah. that up too. And it was just the tool. Like I couldn't, I remember I was just like, how do I get this out of this tool? Like I'd never have touched a tool. I always choose assemble. Like whenever I buy something, pre-assemble yeah. it or I pay like a handyman to come do it. I don't <laughs> touch tools. I'm not like that. And it so was I was just so like, oh God, I don't know what any of this does. It was so funny because I was sitting there during the challenge watching her. And it was so long it got to the point where I remember I went up to one of the producers and I was like, do you have a snack? Like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I like fully ate a granola bar. Like, they walked me to the car to get my granola bar. I walked back. She was so <laughs> And this is like after all the teams have left. That is amazing. <laughs> so Neon in the chat wants to ask, what would you recommend to teams in the future to make better decisions in these critical moments? Trust your gut instantly. And when you think you can do something, when you think you should do something, most likely give yeah. it to your partner. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, that is good. good advice. That is the best advice for anyone watching that yeah. wants to go on Amazing Race. And apparently I'm confused because I swear I thought all the stick shift parts <laughs> in race are always Fords, but I guess they're Volkswagen. <laughs> We're on a Volkswagen and a Ford. So brutal. It's I so have to give a shout out. I, do I have think to mine was a Ford, Rachel. I'm pretty sure like our Ours first were ones were Fords. Yeah, yeah, so it must be both. Because we also did get a Volkswagen in Corsica, I'm pretty sure. I think they but do I think it in Ireland it up on you. Like, I think they purposely do it to like trick you. Yeah, because like I couldn't find the reverse button. Like I literally had to ask a construction worker off the side of the road working yeah. on like cheap or something. Like I was like, can you come help me? Like I don't know how to. Like, That's why I had both hands on it because I was trying to get it out of. Yeah, <laughs> I just had, <laughs> I just had Raquel <laughs> pushing it back like for like the longest time. Raquel was like, we've got to ask somebody i do well, feel like it was a sponsor at that's what i was gonna say it was, it was a sponsor i think are they not still i'm sure that i assume they are i don't know, I, don't know. We, I mean we've had so many challenges with ford stuff it's like the it's like the gnome the roaming travel gnome you know yeah, like, yeah. there's been like a ford like find the ford mustang and there's been like uh, we had to do like a backup with the Ford, the new Ford Focus feature. One time they did that. <laughs> I Ford, remember. I saw that. I remember that. Yeah. The one time they did a challenge with the Ford lift gate with the, they had to like use their foot to put all the stuff into the back of the Ford truck. So I know that they like definitely use Fords a lot. Yeah. Um, Cause sure. You said you had a shout out to make. So oh, I have a shout out. Okay. So. <laughs> First of all, obviously did a very good job learning stick shift, but I have to give a shout out because my childhood best friends, Megan and Ashley, their grandfather, Pop-Pop, taught Karishma how to drive and we had to make a- He didn't even know who I was. He met me that day and let so me drove his like- We had to make a whole like, like elaborate lie, like so <laughs> she was moving to Switzerland, like she needs to learn how to drive a stick shift. And he like, shout out to Pop-Pop. Like he's been- Shout out to Pop-Pop. And shout out to my friend Goose. Goose also taught me from <laughs> college That's in a parking so lot. Cute. That is adorable. I love Pop Pop and Goose. <laughs> yeah, that is I cute. love that. What do you feel like was the biggest takeaway from your Amazing Race experience for the both of you? That's a good question. I think individually for me, it's like slow down and just, just slow down. I think I am just so go, go, go. And I'm so excited to get to the next place, the next adventure. And like watching the season back, I'm like, maybe if I would have just slowed down for a minute or reread the clues or listen to Kishori a little more, we would have had more success. Um, so that was my takeaway individually for personal things I need to work on. I love it. It's so fun. I think for me, for my personal takeaway, I think for the most part, I trust my gut, but there are moments in the race that I look back and I think I like hesitated and I should have, I shouldn't have hesitated. I think, cause I was nervous, like, especially in the skateboard situation. Like I thought it was building and then I hesitated thinking, oh, maybe it's riding a skateboard since Karishma grew up skateboarding. So I think that was definitely a takeaway. And then just in general, in life, I think, you know, just continue, continuing to be adventurous and spontaneous and 
living life to the fullest with joy. And like you, again, like we said on the last episode, you really don't know when it's going to be your last day or your last breath. So just making the most of everything. Yeah, no. I completely agree with that, Kishori. I think it was just, I think throughout the race, we were stressed out, but we we did have fun. Like We had so I, much we had fun, fun Like We weren't stiff about everything. Like no. we do this and that. Like I was really, I was smiling. I was having so much fun with Kishori. Like we came out of this, like we were close before we left for the show. You know, like Kishori is my go-to for everything. I think we call each other like. Every day. Every every day. 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 We're always talking to each other. <laughs> She's my best Well, you friend. spend so much time together, yeah, right? Like yes. going through this experience and like, just with the type of experience that it is, it's like once in a lifetime, right? You know, unless yes. you're Rachel. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, I was just going to say, like, I know, like, it's been like this, like, theme of like, oh, the chaos cousins. Like, I hope you, like, take that as, like, a form of flattery because, like, truly, like, from a yep. TV standpoint, like, you guys were so much fun to watch. And, mm. like, the chaos, like, it reflected back of like, you guys were truly like living in the moment and just like flying by the seat of your pants half the time, but like yep. you were having fun doing it too. So like, I, I don't know, that just reflected well, like at least for me watching and Agreed. like, it's what made Agreed. it so fun. Like just yeah. because like, I was like, oh my God, what are they going to do now? Like I loved every second watching you guys. So oh, thank oh. you so much. Yeah. You're the sweet. <laughs> yeah. You were a joy to watch. I feel like I tell this to every team, but you guys were, you got your, you had a great message to get across to the viewers about just really seizing life and making the most of it. It was a beautiful journey to watch for the two of you. Would you ever do the race again? Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Thanks yes, so definitely much. echo what Kayla said. So much fun to watch. We'll be missed on the race for sure. Oh, um, last question from the chat, and I've been wanting to ask too, and I, I was waiting for this moment, but how was the CMT oh, Awards, yeah. Karishma and Kishori? Oh, it was so <laughs> fun. I remember when we got the email asking um, us to go, and I think a lot of it also came from the fact that I was from Texas. I grew up in Austin. I graduated in the same building a year okay. ago where were the CMT Awards were at. Like, so it was really fun full circle I was like oh I graduated a year ago now I'm back for like the country music awards this is so fun so it was it was, it was such a blast um we also didn't know we'd be walking the red carpet we had no idea you. they just we were like, like you're walking we were like what like, you're like okay go now and we're like so okay. epic <laughs> you two looked amazing and like way to represent the amazing race at the CMTs it was oh, yeah. perfect for them did they style you no, we got our, we were like, oh, we got, we got to look cute. We got our dresses, we got the dry bar for our hair. Oh, yeah. We had all those appointments lined up. I was like, I'm not about to look bad at the CMT. <laughs> no. And especially <laughs> since you got to do the red carpet. So yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was you wow. said. <laughs> and now I love country music so much more now. Like I texted Kishori. I was like, I went in knowing like some country music. I was like, oh, I'm a huge fan, but I was like, and then I came out of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. this. Now. I'm listening to it all the time. Like all the performers, I have it on repeat on the way home from work. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys will surely be missed on the upcoming episodes, especially next week as teams travel to Argentina, Kayla. Ugh, wow. Triggering. The <laughs> name of the the name of the episode is "Our Alliance Strikes Again." So I'll be curious to see what that entails. But teams compete in double the roadblocks and double the detours on a mega leg in Argentina next Wednesday on CBS. Cannot wait to see how the rest of the season plays out. But again, you two will surely be missed. And thank you for joining us to share a little bit yeah, about your experience. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap things up? Uh -huh. no, I, that was it was so much fun i had a blast and i loved every minute of it and i i missed the race and it was it was a great time i'm so happy i did it with kishori i don't think i would do it with anybody else in the entire world I ditto i literally it was the most amazing incredible experience of my life we, we, we literally say it was like the greatest adventure we've had and yeah very lucky very grateful and i wouldn't have done it with anyone else but yeah sure. so thank you for having us this was so much fun i feel bad yeah. for your friend kishori that didn't get to take this spot I know, like, she was honestly not. like this was like teammate gold for us so like i'm super yes. happy yes. that it worked out the way it did he was rooting for us he did come to the new york premier party and he's like this makes sense it so checks out fun. <laughs> Aww. Aww. cute well, y'all are welcome back to recap with us anytime. And Aww. Rachel and Alyssa, thank you so much for joining us as well. It was so great to see your faces. I miss you both.
Yes, thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. So How and will so well I said you. hi and I miss him? I will. I'll be sure to do that. Thank <laughs> our beautiful Will. Uh, well, everyone, we'll be back next week for another recap. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week and have a wonderful evening. Yes. Bye, yes. everyone. So nice to meet everybody. Bye. Bye, queens. All of you. All of you are queens. <laughs> Wait, stay on. We'll chat, Kishore. We'll, we'll chat. Stay on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Text her. Tell her to come back. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>